They want to catch you off guard. <laughs> we if we got a good really good morning. F- funny moment we could put it on America's funniest videos. Uh, you're in the house of the Lord this morning, Dixon, Tennessee. <laughs> you don't use your mic. They say it works better if I talk into the mic. <laughs> Y'all remember the Easter? Uh, I can't believe that next week is the Easter weekend, and yes. we're gonna have fellowship and. We're just trusting the Lord to bring in who He wants to bring in, and we're just, I believe we're going to have a good time in the Lord. Amen. And we're just going to surrender spirit, soul, and body unto the Lord. Amen. We're going to pray that every word said and every song sung would be by the unction of the Holy Spirit to the upbuilding and edifying of His church, His body. Heavenly Father, we pray that you would have oh, your way, that your will would be done. Father, Amen. in each and every service, this service and each and every service yes. next weekend and forevermore, Father, yes. you said that you would bless our coming in and our going out from this time forth even forevermore. And we're trusting you, Lord, to give us wisdom, to heal our bodies, oh, to be everything that we have need of, for you are and you are a rewarder of them that diligently seek thee. And we give you all the praise, all the honor. We thank you for your Holy Spirit, praise Father. We thank you that we know where any two are gathered in your name, that you are the third in the midst of us. And we thank you, Father, for your goodness and for your mercy. Amen. Father, you see Christy Adams and Miss Wendell. And Father, I, there's just too many. Betty Stuckey, Father God, I can't name them all, but Lord God, you know each and every one. Father, we're just thanking you for all these precious dear ones. Darren Best and his church and family. Father, we just, we want to mention them. Father, as we pray, we pray in Jesus' name that you would bring these precious names before us as we're in our closet, as we're crying out to you, Lord, that we would not sin against thee in failing to pray one for another. And we'll not fail to give you all of the praise, all of the honor, and all of the glory. For Jesus, we know you said in John 15, 5, without me, you can do nothing. Yes, Lord. So we thank you that we are well aware that we are the nothing, but you are everything, and you Amen. move through us to heal the nations. And we thank you, sir. Amen. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand today. Oh, Praise God. the Lord. <laughs> Yay, Lord. Uh, number 61 in the book. Page 16. Mm-hmm. Before me, there stands an open door. Oh, the Spirit of the Father. Trust and hear and do my every word. For some you you never come this this way way before. Yes, before. Stands an open door. Hallelujah. The Spirit of the Father says, Go forth. Just trust and hear and do. Son, you never come this way 
before Hallelujah Before me oh, There stands an open door Yes, Father The Spirit of the Father says Go forth Just trust and hear And do my every word For some He destroyed my death and strife, and now the sun shines full within. For the world that was void, he now has restored. He put a rainbow in my life. covenant he destroyed my death and strife and now the sun shines full within oh yes it does the world that was void he now has restored he put a rain He destroyed my death and strife, and now the sun shines full within. This world that was void, he now has restored. He put a rainbow in my life. Hallelujah. Covenant, oh God. Thank you for the blessings, oh Lord, that you have poured out into us, oh God. How you are worthy, oh Lord. You're so worthy. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Ikara ma marando ra na manda. Ikara ma marando ra yande ra yando. Yeah, Lord. Yeah, Lord. Yeah, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh my. Hallelujah, hallelujah. It's so wonderful to be able to praise the Lord this morning. I want to thank him. Uh, I had a heart attack last Sunday, and uh, the Lord kept his hand upon me the whole way. Uh, he watched over my uh, stupidity, and I should have went in days earlier, but the uh, Lord just uh, kept me from having uh, any heart damage. It was a blood clot. Amen. And, uh, and when I did go to the emergency room, I was a hurting. <laughs> and, uh, but, uh, you know, that's just another light affliction, which is but yeah. for a moment. Yeah. And it's working for us a far more exceeding uh, weight of glory, yeah. eternal weight of glory. Yes. Glory to God. Yes, you know, uh, he wasn't just totally just being foolish. He, he thought he had heartburn. 
And he he kept mentioning, you know, this this heartburn is getting really bad. And then uh, Sunday morning, he came to me and he said, I I think I need to go to the hospital. Th you know, this is really bad. Maybe they can give me something for this heartburn. So uh, long story short, they get him on the table and they say, Mr. Taranjo, you're having a heart attack. And he's like, what? <laughs> And by the grace of God, because he said, I felt like I needed to go over here. So he went where he thought he needed. And by the grace of God, they pumped him up with heparin or some kind of blood thinner and sent him by ambulance to a, to a hospital. And uh, God just took care of it. The blood uh, clot went through and the doctor was able to trace it and fix the residue. But the interesting thing to me was he, he was telling Michelle and I, he said, I did an angioplasty and, you know, the little balloon. He said, but it didn't have anything to do with what was going on. It was more of a preventative. Mm -hmm. So I think that God nipped something in the bud mm -hmm. that, that was going to try to happen. And uh, I, I just thank God. He's, he's recovering nicely, but he still needs to rest more than he does. <laughs> but uh you know giving all glory to god we're Amen. we're so grateful to Amen. me that just shows that god's hand is on us Amen. and it's one of those times that that mike used to say oh this is bad this is real bad he had a heart attack but no this is good god not only took care of that he took care of something else that yes. might have been worse Amen. and so we're just Amen. thanking the lord this morning and we, we really appreciate all your prayers. We thank God for, for, there's just so many that have just loved us through this and done above and beyond. And uh, I don't know if I should mention any names of people that so grateful to them for cooking dinners. <laughs> but and real good dinners. <laughs> but God is good. And you know, that's how when one of us is down, instead of shoving them or kicking them or, or, uh, you know, oh, I don't know, they're supposed to be people of faith, you know, all that stuff, gather around and uh, you that are spiritual, restore such a one. You that are spiritual, Hover around, see what they have need of, take care of one another, kindly affectioned one to another is what I read. So, Amen. you know, don't get me started. <laughs> but I, we are so, so grateful to God. Amen. And Amen. by his grace, we're going to, he's not going to be doing the reading room this, this week. Uh, he still needs to take care, right? Well, uh, with the uh, Easter uh, weekend coming up for our meetings, I am going to try and conserve my strength uh, for that. Yes. And make sure I'm doing okay by then. So. Yes. Uh, I'll get back to the reading room uh, yes. after this uh, uh, coming week, I believe. We'll see how it's going. I miss it. I miss being able I to uh, I love it. bring forth the word on that. But um, the Lord knows everything. Yes, and he, he has a purpose behind everything. Yep. So. Hopefully, you all are reading on your own yeah. uh, in Jonathan Mitchell's New Testament and, uh, and, and gleaning out of that. Yes. That was uh, one of the purposes of the reading room is so that you can feel more comfortable in reading something like that, the yes. rendering of the Greek yes. scriptures. And uh, the things you don't understand with it, don't let that bog you down. Mm -hmm. Just go on. And I really loved what Zach uh, ministered on last night and uh, the, the part of Jonathan Mitchell that he read in uh, 1 Corinthians. Uh, so uh, continue on. Yes. And then uh, we'll be gathered back in the reading room before you know it. Praise yes. the Lord. We've got reports that uh, some, some of y'all have actually... Uh, went on to Amazon and ordered your Jonathan Mitchell. 
and mm -hmm. we're really excited about that you know so that you yes. know that way you can continue because we can't no one can give you everything that god wants to give you that you need to receive from god yet that's your closet time whether it's reading or praying that's when you and god meet together and uh so uh, we're really excited about that i did want to mention that you can get it on Amazon, yes. Bob, he knows how to do it on the computer um, to get the writings. I don't know that. But Amazon, you know, you ladies, we know how to shop. <laughs> so, Jonathan Mitchell. Jonathan Mitchell. New Testament. New Testament. New Testament. New Testament. Testament. And it'll show you everything. Okay. So I just wanted to bring that information because we're all having so much fun with it. I, I just love it. Amen. To me, that was my birthday present that, that he read the reading room on my birthday. I, I really enjoyed it. <laughs> 63. We'll sing, dance, and tell the world of his life until Zion sees eye to eye. We shall restore love creation more and show them they don't have to die. We all shall ascend and while living in Him, we're changed to with man in His well. Redeemed we do sing as we dance for the King. Till there is not one man in hell We'll sing, dance, and tell The world of his life Until Zion sees eye to eye We shall restore love's creation more And show them they don't have to die all shall ascend and while living in him we're changed till with man in his way redeemed we do sing as we dance for the king till there is not one man in hell we'll sing dance and tell the world of his life until Zion sees eye to eye We shall restore love's creation more And show them they don't have to die And we all shall ascend and while living in Him We're changed till with man it is well Dance for the king till there is not one man in hell. Oh, we'll sing, dance, and tell the world of his life until Zion sees eye to eye. We shall restore love's creation more and show them they don't have to die. We all shall ascend, and while living in Him, we're changed till with man it is well. Redeemed we do sing as we dance for the King, till there is not one man in hell. Oh, redeemed we do sing as we dance for the King, Till there is not one man in hell. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand again this morning. Hallelujah, Hallelujah Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. That is what we are commissioned to do, and God will fulfill it in us. Uh, aren't you glad not one man in hell? Praise the Lord. Hell's going to give up all of her dead. I don't know why people think hell is eternal. Uh, hell's going to give up all of her dead, and then hell itself is going to be cast into the lake of fire. <laughs> and yet the church 
all those intelligent people, doctors and lawyers and all of that in the church, come up with a doctrine that you're going to be sent to hell forever and ever. And uh, it's not even going to last uh, forever. Uh, it has an end to it. And why has hell got an end to it? Because there's a purpose in hell. Uh, whatever uh, people perceive it to be, uh, it is a, a place of containment where God can deal with people. It's as simple as that. Uh, it's a place where uh, the fires of the substance of the Lord burns away all dross and sin and, and duality and corruption out of a people. Amen. Uh, but, but mostly it contains people uh, until the, the judgment of the Lord. And then the lake of fire is where uh, everything that remains is cast into the lake of fire, not to be destroyed, but to be changed, right. to be uh, transformed and transfigured, just like you and I are being transformed and transfigured right now. Because we are in God. We are walking in Christ. And that means we're walking in fire. Uh, our God is a consuming fire. Uh, and his ministers are flames of fire. So you don't get out of the fire. <laughs> you just become fire. Yes. Hallelujah. You yourself become the pneuma of God. You're changed into the spirit and the image and the likeness of God himself. So uh, there is the where you are no longer under uh, testings and you're no longer under suffering, but the pain stops and you are now the fire. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And we're going to catch a, a lot of people on fire once we become the fire. I'll tell you what, uh, these, the 16 and 17 in the book, uh, it's just got, uh, I can't get out of it. All these songs are speaking to my heart. So give all of your praises unto the great he who sits on your throne, well, he knows everything. And when nothing is hidden and our knees humbly bow to the Christ in each other, then our cup seed will fill. So we bow our knees to the Christ, but in each other. Amen. We bow our knees to the Christ in each other. John, in his uh, epistle, uh, I don't know which John, uh, which uh, John one, two, or three, but he said, "How can you say that you love God and hate your brother?" Yeah. No one can truly love God and hate anyone. Amen. It is a uh, absolute. Um, I heard Dennis James uh, mention this on a, uh, a video uh, that he had the same experience that I had and that Elwin had, Elwin Roach. We compared notes and we found out we'd had this same experience where the Lord gave us a taste of what it was to be Walking in pure love. Pure love. Amen. And uh, it's, it's a scary place in a way 
because you want to hug everybody you see. <laughs> you want to go up. To, the most dangerous place to go when you're in that experience is Walmart. <laughs> <laughs> And I had to watch myself, and I had to really do everything within me not to just get thrown out of Walmart by loving on people and telling them about the Lord Jesus and just letting them know, you know, he loves you more than you can imagine. Uh, you know how they have these people that panhandle outside, and they ask for money. I gave all my money away to all of them. <laughs> I tried to spread it out as much as I could, but man, I had to give that money out because I loved them. Yeah. I, I didn't know if they were charlatans or if they were real. You know, love doesn't care. Right. Love doesn't care. <laughs> and uh, I, I realized if I was going to stay in this place in the Lord where I'm walking in love 24 hours a day, yeah. I'm going to be broke in no time. <laughs> I'm going to see something on TV and I'm going to send them thousands of dollars if I had it. And, uh, and, and I, would, uh, I would take people in. I, I would do any. I had that, that love just, uh, what's the word for it? it uh, yeah, but it impelled me, compelled me. Uh, there was no control over it. it uh, I had to find someone to love in God. And, uh, oh, I ministered out to people everywhere and forgave all enemies and asked God to bless my enemies above what he's blessing me. It was just tremendous. And, and, and what, what it was that I remember is that it was like love wasn't just in my heart. Uh, when, when, like when I was going through Walmart, love was out in front of me. Yes. I'd say about 15 feet in front of me. I, that love was projected out. Yeah. And I believe that people felt that love. It became love. Yes, yes. became love. Yes. And, and that just uh, projected out to where I didn't have to go up and hug them and scare them and all that. <laughs> but I knew that the love of God was just, per, just uh, uh, around me and about me. Yes. And, and, and I was uh, walking in it. In reality, and I couldn't stay there. I tried to stay there, and I couldn't. And just a few days, and it started leaving, and I got back to a normal life. But it was a preview. Yes. It was uh, a, uh, a, a, a a glimpse into that realm yes. where we need to be walking in. Yes. Yes. Uh, I know we have more love than we've had in our past and all that, but we haven't even touched the surface of this thing of when, it, uh, when love consumes us. Yes. Consumes yes. us. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. And, and, and there isn't any room or any place for anything that isn't love. You know, when Jesus said uh, that... Uh, the devil had no place in him. That's what that meant. There was no place in Jesus where evil could abide at. He was fully God. And God filled the house. That's what Feast of Tabernacles is all about, folks. Filling the house with God. And, and, and coming into this kind of a depth of reality of walking and talking and living out of Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What's that song of uh, uh, our friend out in California that's passed on, Nina Scott? Oh, golly. And it has in it, consume me with your love. Yes. Is it in the book? No. I won't be satisfied till I awaken his 
His likeness Till I see Him face to face And know as I am known Holy Spirit consume fire of your love when I awaken his likeness then I'll be satisfied no I won't be satisfied Till I see him face to face And know as I am known Holy Spirit, consume me With the fire of your love In his likeness, then I'll be sad. Come on, everybody, worship the Lord, worship his name. No, I won't be satisfied till I awaken his I see him face to face, yes, Lord, and know as I am known, Holy Spirit, consume me, oh, with the fire of your Hallelujah, Lord, hallelujah, Lord. Bless your name, bless your name. Oh, hallelujah, consume us with your love, oh Lord. Oh, God. Shed abroad, Almighty Lord, lift your people on high, Almighty God. Spirit wings flutter overhead Angel voices sing you are blessed We all live in unity Dwelling together
His love and power Our spirits live Oh, one Praise the Lord. It's good to be quiet before the Lord and to let God speak to our hearts from the Spirit. 
You know, I thank God for the ministry that does speak words of life to us, and uh, it's it's a blessing. But there's nothing like hearing from the Lord in your own heart. Yes. Um, to allow the Lord the freedom to speak to us things that only uh, we and him know about. The dealings of the Lord. Um, and uh, there's a song that I really came to me while we were waiting on the Lord. Hmm. And um, it's, it was written a long time ago by Charlotte. I hate to say it, but these songs are, are getting really old uh, age-wise. But the message is just as relevant as ever, right, Jane? And um, in fact, I think they're a little ahead of their time. A lot of people didn't understand what these songs were saying back when we received them from the Lord. And um, people either loved them or they hated them. <laughs> I remember one uh, lady preacher, uh, she uh, said, this is what I think of the Taranjo songs and she put it on the ground in front of us and jumped up and stomped on it. <laughs> and we just sat there thinking, oh, my Lord. <laughs> she just stomped on the songbook. <laughs> and uh, we, we just kind of laughed it off. We thought, oh, well. But, you know, uh, and she was a well-known uh, kingdom preacher. And uh, about a year later, we were in the annual meeting of this in Sedgwick, Colorado, and she was there again, and she got up, and we thought, well, here we go. <laughs> and she said, I want to tell you all that every word in this songbook is written by the Spirit of God. And she said, in fact, I want to preach out of this songbook today. <laughs> She preached out of it. <laughs> and, you know, God just has to deal with people. Uh, you can't get mad at people if they don't agree with you or if they don't see what you're seeing. You can't hold that against them because they will, uh, if they're meant to see it, God might show it to them next week or a year after or five years after. I had this one woman up in Detroit. She, uh, at our church in Detroit, she started listening to what we were saying. Uh, she enjoyed the spirit. She enjoyed the, the flow of the spirit and all of that. And then she started listening to what we were saying. And boy, she really got mad at us and left the church, took a lot of people with her and all that. Well, then we had moved out to Arizona. Um, and uh, while we were out there, this lady uh, got our number somehow and called us and she said, I want you to know, she said that I apologize for my behavior. And this is years later, apologize for my behavior. And she said, I'm just really asking, would you and Charlotte please come back and minister everything you know to us because we're seeing it. We are Praise seeing God. it now. But, you know, if you get your feelings hurt and you say, ah, I'm done with them. Oh, it's all over for them. And then you cut off any avenue for them to come back and be able to say, you know, the Lord dealt with me. The Lord showed me these very things. Mm -hmm. 54. Build up the way places restore paths to dwell in repair the breach lift high the 
standard of our God. Blow loud the trumpet, help us, Lord. Throw wide your gates now. The time. time to favor mm -hmm. Jerusalem. Hallelujah. Praise. I want to minister a little bit. Um, and then whoever wants to follow can follow. With whatever the Lord has given to you. Praise the Lord. Let me fix it. Technical difficulties. We have to readjust the camera. <laughs> you should have seen what I just did to you. Oh, yeah. no. For me. <laughs> I got the power of the camera. Oh, no. Thank you, Lord. All right. Uh, I've been uh, hearing the Lord say uh, to me this morning that, you know, the bottom line of everything that we're involved with right now is uh, the change. That's what we are really uh, all about. That's the bottom line. So whatever else is going on uh, in our lives and in our spirit and everything that, uh, that is either blessing us or trying us is working toward getting that 
bringing about that change. We have to be able to visualize what's happening on the inside. Because we're like a farmer. When you uh, plant a seed and you bury it, you have to take it by faith that something's happening in that ground. Because you can't go digging up that seed all the time to see and bolster your faith and say, oh, yeah, it's growing. You have to plant it. You have to bury it. And then let the process take place. And that's the way it is in God. The main times when we look inside and, 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 and at our outward life and we try to calculate how much have I changed? How much have, have I, um, uh, we, we look and say, is there less wrinkles this morning? Or am I looking the part? Am I feeling the part? Uh, but none of that is going to give us uh, the witness about what's going on. Because what's going on is on the inside. Amen. outside of our ability to look at it. So the change takes place uh, in a people, and it doesn't take place in a church building. Amen. Meetings don't bring about the change. Amen. A lot of people think they do. I have been in some of the most tremendous meetings in the last 50 years. I have been in some meetings from day one that would just blow your mind what happened in those meetings. And you know what? After every conference or after every gathering, the people would get lifted way up in the Lord and they'd get encouraged and everything. They would hear a word that would help them somewhat, but give them just a few weeks and that wears off. Just being realistic about it all. It wears off and then you're right back to the same grind, the same trying to live for God and being able to wait for the next meeting. I know people from last October when we had our meeting in October, some had already made their reservation for the next October. And they were so excited, but they were waiting a whole year for that to happen again. And we can't get into that mentality. We can't get in the mentality where we're going to start chasing meetings all over the place in order to think, well, I'm going to get more of God and so I'm going to get changed and I'm going to do this. No, there's an order to what the change is. It's a certain process that you and I cannot quicken up or slow down by what's going on in our life. God has a timetable. It's set. And we aren't going to uh, disappoint God enough to the point that he's going to stop changing us. And we're also not going to impress God enough by our worship and by our word and by everything else for him to maybe quicken it up. He has a timetable. And it's set. And we are learning how to walk according to that timetable. According to what God is showing us in this day. I'm going to take you over to 1 Corinthians. And uh, we'll go to the uh, 15th chapter. And... um, I want to bring out a little something on that. Do you love the Lord today? Are you ready for anything? (laughs) Hallelujah. Uh, 
1 Corinthians 15, well-known verse. We've all preached on it. Uh, 1 Corinthians 15, uh, 50. Uh, now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I show you a mystery. Mysterion. I show you and I reveal to you, Paul is saying, a sacred secret. Uh, the Greek implies a secret that is that you are initiated into. So we are always saying that no one comes into this message simply because they want to. You can try to figure it out. You can try to get all the knowledge. You can try to get all of the scriptures. You can try to learn it through videos and through CDs. Uh, but it cannot be truly known in the sense to where God wants us to know it except by a spiritual initiation into a sacred secret that God reserves back only for those who are destined for this. Now, that's why we don't have very many people in the house today. That's why you hardly ever see a true sonship kingdom church that ministers all the truth of God to have very many people in it. Because the fact is that the natural man cannot comprehend and receive the things of the spirit. It's impossible, the scripture says. They are spiritual truths that must be known through the spirit. Now, if you think, okay, I have come into this truth and I came into it through a lot of study. Well, I would say to that, that you may have studied a lot, but that's not what brought you into this truth. If you're seeing what I'm saying today, and if you're seeing the true kingdom message, then you didn't get that by all that study. You may think you did, but you can't take any credit for that. It is God that the, no man can come to the Father except the Spirit draws him. And that's where we're at now. We cannot, we're not normal in the sense, and I hate to say that to you, but you're abnormal in that way where we are not Christians that have heard a message of repentance, gone to the altar and said a certain quotation of a prayer that they all asked them to repeat after them and then had something happen to them. We're not that. We're not preachers. We're not church builders. We're not trying to get a bunch of warm bodies in a, in a dead, cold place. We are, we are ministers of the kingdom. And the kingdom is without observation. Amen? The kingdom comes without observation. That, that really is hard for a lot of people because they want to be able to let uh, God be seen and say, here, see everybody, we were right. This is the kingdom, see it? And, and they want to show it off so that they are, uh, you know, uh, uh, made to feel like as though God has somehow uh, redeemed them from all of the criticism and from all of the condemnation they receive from religious folks. But we can't do that. He's a, he's a spirit. God is a spirit. Yes. And unless you get in the spirit, you won't see him or know him. He's spirit. And that is where the sons of God have to go to. To where they are no longer, their motivation isn't to impress anyone with their anointing or with their word or with some kind of a, 
uh, an evidence that God is indeed working in us. We want to raise the dead. We want to go and see what happens in the big prayer lines. We want to see legs grow out. We want to see blind eyes opened. We want to uh, see the deaf hear. And all of those outward signs and evidences that God is doing those things. But that's in the second day. In the third day, it isn't get your eyes upon these things. Our eyes have to be cast upon Jesus. And Jesus isn't always shouting. And Jesus isn't always dancing. And Jesus isn't always loud and boisterous and giving everybody goosebumps. Jesus can be, as he was at one point in this service, quiet. He can be silent. He can be deep water that yes. doesn't make a noise. Yes. But you feel the deepness of it Amen. by the very quiet. Uh, he is that. Uh, in the third day, we are uh, going to have to see God in every aspect of our life, every aspect, good and bad. Uh, so he says, now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither doth corruption inherit corruption. Behold, I show you a mystery, a mysterion, a sacred secret. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. Uh, he's speaking to the Christians in Corinth, and he is saying we shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. By that word sleep, Paul is, is uh, uh, speaking on the same wise that Jesus was about Lazarus. Yes. Uh, what about Lazarus, Lord? He stinketh by now. Lazarus is sleeping. So don't worry about Lazarus. I'm going to go wake him up. <laughs> Hallelujah. But don't worry about him. I'm going to go wake him up. And Lazarus is going to be okay. And uh, Paul is saying here, we shall not all die, but we shall all, uh, all be changed. What do you mean that we won't all die, Paul? Are you, are you saying what I think you're saying, that there's some that will not die? There's some that will not be buried in a grave? Are you saying that there are, are uh, some of us here that are not going to die? And he says, uh, but we shall all be changed. Uh, death is a word that we don't fully understand or put in its right place. Death, you were dead when you came out of your mother's womb. But you were dead in trespasses and sins. You had, from your mother's womb, a nature to sin. It didn't, you didn't get contaminated by the world out here, and that's the reason why you went out and sinned. Uh, it was in you. It was a part of you. Through Adamic uh, lineage, you bore, as it says up above here in the 49th verse, and the, uh, let's go to the 48th, as is the earthy, such are they also that are earthy, and as is the heavenly, such are they also that are heavenly. And as we have borne the image of the earthy, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. You were born with the image of the earthy in you. Then Jesus appears and you take on the heavenly image. Amen. And it's that changeover from being earthy minded to heavenly minded. And that's where we have to be. We can't keep thinking thoughts from an earth dimension. We have to raise our thoughts into the heavenly thoughts. Those thoughts that are in the higher dimensions of God. 
so that we are no longer looking at things from a, a limited view, but we start believing things in God that are impossible because our mind is changing. Whereas we once saw nothing but limitations, now we are open to the fact that God indeed can do the impossible. And that God is able to take those things that are, are, are earthy and bring them into another image and upon them of heavenly. Hallelujah. So there's a pattern here. Paul is saying we should not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump. For the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised, incorruptible, and we shall all be changed. Now let me break this down a little bit. In a moment, the word actually has nothing to do with time in the Greek. The uh, interpreters, translators of King James put in the word moment erroneously. The word there is in an atom. In an atomus, the smallest particle is what it actually means. The smallest thing at the time of the Greek was an atom. But now we know there's things inside an atom, right, Julie? We know that an atom has in it protons, is it, and neutrons, and now they're talking about quarks. So that even the smallest particle that the Greek knew at their time, atomos, we now know that's not necessarily even then. It is not necessarily where the change really takes place. Where does the change take place? In the smallest particle of our being. You've heard of the uh, uh, atomic bomb, right? Where they, they uh, collide atoms or they, they, I can't remember how that is. They split it, but I don't know the process. I can't remember. But they actually, when they split the atom, and it's amazing, isn't it, to anybody else? I don't know, but it's amazing to me that such a small thing as an atom can cause such a huge reaction. But the in a atom, I'm going to I'm going to translate this in the Greek as I see it. In an atomus the smallest part of you, at the jerking of your eye to a side event is what twinkling means, jerk, to have your eye jerk aside. And it's jerking aside to see a side event, something happening that is out of your is that is happening on the peripheral of your vision. That's what the Greek really translates there. Everybody thinks it's the blink of an eye. The rapture is going to take place in the blink of an eye. But it really means in anatomus. In the jerking of your eye, your inner eye of Christ that sees into the spirit, that is able to perceive the things of God. Don't take that lightly, folks. There's millions upon millions of people that have never, ever, ever felt anything in God. 
They, they haven't even gotten a goose bump from the Spirit of God. To them, God is unknown, unfelt, no relationship whatsoever. And yet I know some people in the kingdom that get down on themselves because they're not walking on water yet. <laughs> you know, I want to be walking on water. I want to be translated from one city to another. I want to uh, have all of these things happen to me. But be thankful. Be thankful for what you see. Be thankful for where you are right now because you're going to grow and you're going to be going beyond where you are right now. But uh, uh, the same word that was given to Mary, I give to you. Blessed are you who have heard the voice of the Lord. How favored are you? The fact that you have, have been able to uh, feel the spirit in the slightest way because it's rare. The mega churches, they're not ministering by spirit. They're ministering out of emotion. They're ministering out of entertainment. They're ministering out of a uh, soul. They're ministering a soulish realm. And in that soulish realm, all it is built upon is emotions. They'll have singers get up, professional singers, could be, if they're not now, they, every one of them could, uh, could sing in, in a club anywhere and get paid for it. They have professional singers and musicians who are trained on, on uh, uh, moving the, the, the strings of our heart. Hallelujah. Bobby Jean and I just saw a documentary on uh, one well-known, famous uh, musical worship uh, corporation. Uh, and it became what they called a church, but it never was a church because it was a business. And they operated it like a business. And everything was about money. And people, though, how many hundreds of dollars will people drop at a concert? Yes. Just to hear their favorite musician. And people in these churches will drop thousands of dollars just to be entertained. Because they've never actually felt the deepness of God. All they want is entertainment. All they want is to feel this rush. Well, you can get that at any, you can get that at a Garth Brooks concert. He'll give you a rush. Every time I hear the national anthem, I get emotional. I get goosebumps. I just love my country. And I love what that song stands for. And, and I can't hardly take it. Every time they play that thing and before a sports event or something while I'm watching it, uh, I've got to hide my face because I'm bawling over there. Simply, And I keep telling myself, don't cry over that. No, you've been doing it all the time. Don't cry. And I can't help it. I can't help it. I think of all those that have given their lives for this country. I think of everybody, how God chose America to be able to bring his word forth. And America, I know, has gone off in a, a, a way off the path that God directed it to come to, but God chose this country in the very beginning, and he's going to do something in America yet. Yes. Hallelujah. He's yes. not done with America. Amen. When it's darkest, the light is going to shine. Hallelujah. And I'm expecting great things to happen in this country. I'm expecting God to, to get the, guess what happens when the people won't listen to God? Guess what happens when everybody turns their, uh, their hearing off uh, to God? Then he starts making things happen that will get our attention. Yes. And, uh, but he has a people. There's a people in America and around the world, he has a people who are hearing this mysterion, 
this mystery. They, they once were religious and they once were a part of Babylon, but God called them out of Babylon and brought them into New Jerusalem. Hallelujah. And now they are pillars in the city of God. Glory. Hallelujah. Now they are the messengers of the Lord. And, and, and when John said, and I saw another angel, that is this trumpet today. Hallelujah. John saw another angel flying in the heavens. Glory to God and saying, uh, 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 blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. This is he that was and is and is to come. Glory. The Lord reigneth, glory. No sad tales here. The Lord reigneth, glory to God. He reigns over the people. He reigns over the governments. He reigns over the nations. Hallelujah. Amen. And God has everything on a timetable. So don't think that God's out of control when you see the war in Ukraine. There are things that happen every day that we don't see and we don't realize is happening. Children die from hunger every day in the world. Every day, children die from having no food. Every day in this world, people are tortured and beaten and raped. And, and, and horrible things are done to them every day. And we don't actually realize it or take thought about it because it's not in front of us. Amen. So when a war comes about like it is in Ukraine, it affects us. We wonder where God is, right? Where's God? Well, God's more involved than what we could ever dream of. I would dare say there's stories in every calamity, there's stories where God intervened Amen. in individuals' lives. Yes. Uh, we know veterans that have had uh, such miraculous things done to them on the battlefield by yes. God. Yes. Uh, Robert Nelson, Brother Robert Nelson, yes. up in Michigan, he uh, was uh, in World War I, uh, was it, or two? Two. And uh, he had, uh, how, what was his story, honey? He had a, a, an angel appear to him. He's, his mama had told him, son, one of these days you're going to come up against something that you ain't bigger than because he was a big guy. His mama told him that he was going to come up against something that he wasn't bigger than. And he was on that death march. And I don't know the name of the river, but there was a stone wall. He was on a death march, and there was a stone wall next to a river. And he looked at his buddy, and he said, I'm about to starve to death. And my mama told me somebody I could look up to. Come up here. I, I, I want everybody to hear this because this happens every day. <laughs> I told you that evil happens every day. But I'm telling you, this kind of a thing happens every day. Uh, Brother Bob, uh, he, he was in World War II, and you've probably seen documentaries where Patton went into that awful prison, and they pulled out, uh, they only found two men alive. One of those men was, was our Brother Bob, Robert, and uh, he... What had happened was those two men that lived, <clears throat> pardon me, they, uh, he, he told his buddy, see, if they started to fall or anything, they'd just uh, put a lance through them, shoot them, because they didn't have the food to feed themselves. So they weren't, you know, they weren't worried about feeding the prisoners. It's just one less to worry about, boom, gone. And uh, he was walking and he told his buddy, I'm going to talk to somebody my mama told me about. And he called on, he didn't really even believe in God, but he called on God. He said, Lord God, you know, Lord, if you're there, he said, my mama said you'd help me. 
And through this stone wall came a hand with a piece of bread. And he took that bread, and if I'm sure that military men know that when you have a buddy, you know, you know, you share. And it was a piece of bread, and he shared it with his buddy. And those two men were the only ones that came out of that. Mm. They were the only ones. You know, um, there's a scripture here that when Bob was talking, I'm not, no, I'm giving it back to Bob. But in uh, 1 Peter, sorry, in 1 Peter and chapter 3 and verse, verse 8, it says, now this is the goal, the final situation, the end of the process, all that are to be like-minded of the same frame of mind and disposition, folks sharing and express, expressing, we need more of that, sharing and expressing the same feelings, being sympathetic ones, being found and expressing affection for the brothers, fellow believers, uh, equal communal members, people tender-hearted and compassionate folks of humble disposition and way of thinking. This is the goal to become as one. This is the goal yes. to love one another. This is the goal for us. And uh, I, I just uh, thank God that God has put in my life, and there's there's a few few Bobs and Bobbies that I've I've uh, have been a great blessing to me in my life, but Brother Bob, that's a true story. I I actually saw on the documentary, you know, he had this person that looked more like a skeleton, and he said that when Patton came through, and they opened that like oven thing or whatever, and they opened it and they yelled in there. He said that God gave him the grace to make a noise. And they were all shocked. They said, I hear something. I believe someone may be alive in here. Mm -hmm. And they got him out. And that's what, I mean, there's way more to his story, but what God did, he said, it's a horrible thing to fall into the hands of your enemy. The atrocities that he lived through, uh, we won't even get into right now, but God is God. God is in control. Yeah. And he went on to minister the gospel. His mama prayed him through, and he, yeah, one of the greatest men of God I've ever met. Amen. It, it's a wondrous story. And uh, Brother Bob is now uh, up in his uh, 90s, 90s, up in his 90s. And... Uh, he uh, was uh, one of the greatest prophets I'd ever heard in my life mm -hmm. and uh, very unassuming and very humble. Yes. Now, we're going to have to learn that. Yes. We're going to have to learn that humility yes. is the building block upon which God builds in your life. If you're haughty and arrogant, he can't build on that. Mm -hmm. It'll all come tumbling down. Amen. But if we stay humble before the Lord, and if we allow God to be the focal point of what is being said and done, that we're constantly pointing people toward Jesus and not toward me, Amen. Uh, then, then we will be given entrance into a place in the Lord. But if we continue to minister out of a self-arrogance, pointing everything toward us, then we can't go anywhere in God. We're going to, uh, uh, God isn't going to increase us or reveal himself to us in any further way. So that's what I'm trying to get across this morning, is that there is a process to this change. And it's not just going to... Uh, be something that happens in a meeting and all of a sudden we're all glowing in the dark. Uh, it happens in everyday life. Yes. We've got to stop living this thing in the services and then not living it outside the services. Amen. We've got to start walking in the fullness of God 
in our everyday life. Yes. And that means that we have got to start shedding off from us every other voice, every other attraction, everything else that would try to get our uh, undivided attention, and we have to start walking in the peace of God. Uh, you know, uh, the last reading room, um, Paul just about done me in in, in, in Hebrews uh, because he was saying that we were going to have to walk in unity and peace with everybody. Yes. <laughs> with everybody. Now, I don't want to go into all the specifics on that because it will bring you down. But that means everybody that is nice and everybody that are mean as the devil. Everybody that is a good citizen and that also means everybody that does atrocious things. Can we do that right now? I can't. I'm not there yet. I described a preview into something where I could. In that experience I had in love, I could love the loveless. No doubt about it. And, uh, but that is what we need. To understand that is what we are being turned into, changed into, is this non-human new man in Christ, where we are, we, we are uh, uh, right now we have a life, we have jobs, we have this, we have that, but eventually as we walk into Christ, those things are going to become less and less important to us as it is about changing, allowing the change to happen so that we can bless creation out of that change. Yes. Yes. It's not even about me or you. Everything happening in us is for the creation, hallelujah, so that we become the firebrands of God, the, 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 the heralds of his uh, kingdom, glory to God, yeah. so that our voice is the voice of the resurrection, so that we become the seventh trumpet in the land. That is more than just one trump. That's the seventh trump. That is a complete trump. That is all the prior trumps combined into that seventh trump. Hallelujah. And it comes about by a people who have died to their natural fleshly self and who have been resurrected into the nature and the name of Jesus Christ. Glory to God. And anything less will not do. Anything less when we go by the grave, just like everyone else has that's gone before us. But there is going to be a people who are going to attain that very thing. Hallelujah. You know, when I had that heart attack, I really wasn't scared of dying at all. Um, we have to get to a point, I believe, and I have a ways to go in that. I'm not saying I've attained. But I believe we have to get to the point where it's not about life or death. Paul was there, I think, when he said that I would much rather be absent from this body and be with the Lord. But he said it's more expedient for you, for me to be here. But in his own heart, uh, he was ready for a departure. So I think we're eventually going to get to the place where we say either I live or I die makes no difference Amen. at all. Amen. It doesn't play in the equation of what I am being changed into. And what doesn't happen on this side of the river will happen on that side of the river. And Jane was talking to me before the service, and she was saying, you know, 
that man in the middle of the river in Daniel 12. Uh, and he was ministering to both sides of the river. We need to minister to both sides of the river now. Yeah. And I believe we are, Jane. Right. I believe we are getting into that position where we are going to start to see a people uh, break off from the bank of the earthly side. And they are going to start moving into the middle of the river where the man in linen is standing and speaking. And I believe you, if, if, if you could see that with your eyes, you would see a people, a remnant, an elect of God, a called out, separated people unto God, you would see them start to leave the bank. And on the other bank, at the same time, you would start to see spirits of just men made perfect leaving that bank. And I believe that it's reciprocal as these move into the middle of the river, those move into the middle of the river, and there will be a meeting of the two Amen. in Christ. Because right. he's the man in the middle of the river. <laughs> Come on, let's give the Lord a hand this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. That's the gathering. Amen. Let the gathering be unto him. Oh, hallelujah. The ecclesia. Uh, that that in involves both those that are present and those that are absent. Hallelujah. It's the ecclesia. Our membership doesn't stop at the grave. It continues. We're still the members of Christ's body whether on this side or that side. Isn't it wonderful? Amen. All of our loved ones, all of those that have known God, uh, Charlotte, Brother Ryan, uh, Mike Kelly, um, all of those that were so dear to us in the house of the Lord, uh, they are all gathered at the bank of the river along with us. <laughs> Hallelujah. They are all looking into this where we are looking into where we're at and they are groaning and travailing with us and ministering unto us from that dimension for a word to be delivered out of us, but not a preaching word. It's not a preaching word that we need. It's, it's the living word. Amen. It's a word that's beyond language. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's a word that is in a people. Glory to God. It's an expression, you see. It's not a language. The word of God is a song. It's an expression. It moves things. Glory to God. When it expresses itself, it communicates spiritually in a way that is going to cause things to be changed. Hallelujah. That is going to bring about the change from death unto life, from darkness unto light. Glory to God. From a people who are bound to a people who are delivered. Hallelujah. So uh, this is what I see here in a moment in an atomist at the smallest particle of your being in the jerking of your perception of your vision. Your vision is being drawn to the side because he's not appearing to us here where everybody else is looking at. God's appearing over here. He's never appeared where people were looking for him. He's appearing over here to the side, peripheral. And he appears peripherally so that we have to turn to look at him. Yes, so that we are turned out of our way, out of our thinking, out of our perceptions. Oh, hallelujah. Yes. And we turn and see this event taking place in God that we have been so privileged to be chosen to be able to have that event at the peripheral of our vision. Hallelujah. 
in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump. Well, I already told you it's a last trump, but it's a complete trump. It's a seventh trump. And it involves all the trumps that's ever trumped. Hallelujah. It's a, a, a seven means completion. Seven means perfection. Seven means uh, without anything lacking. Hallelujah. And I believe that's what we are in the middle of right now is that our voice is a trumpet. Glory to God. Music is the thing that is going to change the world. Yes. There's a music that just like a dog's whistle, you can't hear it, but a dog can hear it, but it sounds nothing to you because you don't have the ear to hear it. I believe that there is a word and an expression and a sound that is coming out of the sons of God that creation can't hear right now. You can't hear it. I can't hear it. We just speak it out, but we're not, we're, we're not uh, able to fully comprehend it. But I believe that is how in every man, woman, and child at that's, that's alive at that time, they are going to hear something in their innermost being that is a result of truth. Trumpets being blown in the midst of God's people. Hallelujah. So that the sound of it, the scripture says, the sound of it went into all of the earth. Yes. Hallelujah. Not the word of it, not the English language of it. The sound of it. Yes. Did you have something to say? No. Oh, you're just praising. Hallelujah. <laughs> These people around here don't usually lift their hands. You had me going there for a moment. I won't say that. <laughs> Don't let me stop you from doing that by my foolishness, please. For the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible and we shall be metamorphosed. Hallelujah. I love what... Uh, you know, I wrote things that I, I, I don't remember writing them because I was caught up into the spirit when I wrote them. And I posted on Facebook a uh, memory from Annalise Mouton, who lives in South Africa. And uh, she was an avid reader uh, of, of my writings at one point. And she posted that, uh, that memory, and I shared it. But I was saying in that writing, and I believe it was in the Metamorphosis series that I was writing it, and I was bringing out the fact that the butterfly was in the worm all along. So the butterfly uh, part, partook of the journey of the worm. It crawled and it was limited because it was in the worm. Christ is in us. Amen. And David wrote, though I make my bed in hell, thou art with me. You know why uh, he could write that? Because Jesus went to hell with him. So they're both going through the journey of the worm and then they both enter into the chrysalis or chrysanthemum, whatever they call that. And they, the butterfly is then released from the worm, from the worm's limitations And when they are done in their transformation, in their metamorphosis, now the worm is in the butterfly. And the butterfly, when the, the worm, when the butterfly comes out of the cocoon and it dries its wings and it takes flight, the worm takes flight with it. <laughs> Hallelujah. So can you see the relationship there? The butterfly 
partook of the sufferings of the worm, but then the worm partook of the victory of the butterfly and the freedom of the butterfly in soaring and taking, taking flight. Uh, that is, that's, that's where I want to get on here, where I want to talk a little bit about how this has a, a, a real pattern to it. Uh, for this corruptible must put on incorruption and this mortal italics on the word must. The word must is an action and a desperation. It is uh, a command must. You must pick up your toys. <laughs> uh, this corruptible must, without a doubt, it must be brought to a place where it puts on the butterfly in corruption. And this mortal put on immortality without the second must there because the real command and action is in the incorruptible part. Once that's done, then this mortal puts on immortality as a side effect to the real work of changing the soul. So the change happens first in the pattern of it. First, it happens in the spirit. And then it goes from spirit into the soul. And then from the soul into the body. The body is the last part of this transfiguration. The last part. So you can feel like hell today, but that has nothing to do with the metamorphosis that's taking place in you on the inside right now. Right now. Uh, and that's where our mind has to be. That's where our trust in, I love what Bobby Jean's teaching, trusting God. Trusting in the Lord. Because our whole journey is about trust. Amen. We, we, we have to trust that we are indeed that people. And that God is truly doing these things inside of us. Uh, who was it that said trust brings about faith? Or, or you, you, you can have... You can have faith to trust. Yes. And uh, the, the, this, this one uh, man that I was listening to a little bit on Facebook said something about uh, you can have hope without faith, but you can't have faith without hope. Because you have to hope in, in Christ. Yes. And, and there are See, this, this is the way God's uh, kingdom is, is built and operates. There are, there are first things and then next things and then next things. Yes. Yes. We, our, the old uh, saying is, don't get the cart in front of the horse. Uh, you have to make sure that you have the horse in front and the cart behind. Simple stuff, right? But in the Lord, that is so important. Yes. We have to have understand the change. We have to understand the change, so that even even in when when we don't have the full picture of it, we start seeing that everything outside of us. I don't want to say is a lie. It's not a lie. Uh, it's a reality. But it's a lower reality. Uh, Einstein that I posted on Facebook also said that we are light beings uh, and that we are, are 
slowed down in in our uh, in our lives in our existence we are slowed down light and we are connected throughout the universe by this light and music now i believe that we're making music here today Amen. that is connecting and complementing and harmonizing with other music and if we raise our music up a little bit, we will be connected with the music that God makes Amen. all throughout the universe and all throughout the ecclesia, all throughout creation. Hallelujah, hallelujah. That is what we are doing. Not preaching, no. not trying to change your mind into our mind. Not me getting up and trying to bring you under the way I'm thinking about things. But to be able to minister to the, to the people of God so that they are raised up into a higher place of expression. A living word. A living word. You, Hallelujah. Amen. Do you love the Lord this morning? Uh, ooh. If anybody else has something to say, be sure to come on up and do it. Thank you, Lord. You know, that scripture comes, keeps coming to my mind how good and pleasant it is for the brethren to dwell in unity. Yes. Amen. And all week I've just been just living in the love of the Lord Amen. to 
allow him to express his love. And we don't often tell each other how much we love you, love each other. But that is, it's not just a fleshly love. It is the love, the liquid love of the Father. That is the only thing that will change anything or move anything, correct anything, lift up anything, take down anything. It's the answer to everything. His, yeah. his love Amen. can't be fleshly love. <laughs> but I was sitting back here, and I saw a vast army. It was just spread over the horizon. And the Lord said, don't break ranks. Because the ranks that don't need to be broken is that love of the Lord that we have for one another, that maturity that we have in the Lord, that expression that we have. And the Lord just spoke to me. He he said, don't break ranks. So I'm just coming before you and letting you all know that I, I love you. I love you all. From the greatest to what anybody on in the flesh deems to the least, it doesn't make any difference to me whether you have a, a, a position here or, or you're just somebody who has a heart for the Lord. It, <laughs> that's who we all need to be. <laughs> just somebody, some nobody that has a love of God because it isn't about us. And we're not here to to speak what we think or, or what we, should, we think everybody should know, but we're here to speak what the Lord is saying in the earth. Yes. And, and that, that mighty army would be nothing without the love and the unity. Yes. And that's what the Lord was speaking to me was the unity of it all. We, we come together in love. Yes. And that, uh, out of obedience, we look at the love that is in our brethren and we join together with it and come to that place of maturity where we allow nothing to to separate or break that rank because that's where, wherever God has placed you, that's where you're supposed to be. And... None of us can change any of that. Yeah. So I just wanted to tell you all how much I love you. Mm-hmm. Thank you Lord. And it isn't just something that I'm speaking out of my mouth. It's out of my being.
I do feel the love of God in this place. And I hope those that have tuned in on Facebook and on YouTube can feel the same love. You're a part of us. And uh, we will. We're joined to you. Praise God. Mm. Oh, love that will not let me go. Oh, love that purifies my soul. A God of hearts, a God of days. Oh, love that will not let And death has no dominion over me, for Christ is come, and we are one, oh love that will God of hearts, a God of days, oh love that will not let me go, my life is swallowed. Yes, it is. And death has no dominion over me. For Christ is come. And we are one. Oh, love. That will we'll not let me go. Amen. Father, I ask, Lord, that your word will be sent out, O God, and that, Lord, it will be written upon the tables of your people's hearts. The love of God. Hallelujah. It will never fail us. Your love, Lord, for each and every one of us is beyond comprehension and beyond measure. And Lord, you said that uh, uh, it's not by might and it's not by power, but my, my spirit, says yes. the Lord. Yes. And Lord, uh, God so loved the world yes. that he gave his only begotten son. Yes. Lord, how we thank you. Yes. For your mighty love. And I know love is going to see us through. Yes. I know love is going to lift us up when we would fall. Love is going to give us eagle's wings. Hallelujah. Your love, Lord. Not the fleshly love of men, but your love. Hallelujah. Will stand up in us. 
Keep us safe throughout the days ahead. Hallelujah. How we thank you this morning. And Lord, I'm lifting up each and every one under the sound of my voice. That your spirit will move in their lives. That God, they will find peace in the time of trouble. That Lord, they will find you in the midst of their storms. That God, they will turn their eyes upon you and see their deliverance. Hallelujah. So we lift you up in uh, in the midst of your people, Lord. We lift you up in your temple. And we're asking you, Lord, to fill each and every one with life and glory and soundness of mind. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 We thank each and every one of you for your support. I'm always amazed when I open up an envelope and I see a wonderful uh, letter and a donation into the house of the Lord. Um, And on PayPal. For those of you that have been given offerings, uh, I just thank you. And the house of the Lord thanks you. Yes. Without your uh, donations, we could not continue ministering. Absolutely. So we thank you for it. And we ask God to bless you above yes. and beyond yes. all yes. your expectations. Yes. Hallelujah. Press down, shaking together, yes. good measure, yes. and running over. Praise yes. God. All right. God bless. Love each other and love the world. Yes. Amen.